And welcome back, esports fans, to more of Week 4, Day 2 here at the PCS. I am very excited to get into the last couple day games of the day. But before we do, I want to take a brief moment to thank our wonderful sponsors, of course, CTBC Bank, China Airlines, and Chunghua Telecom. Thank you once again for sponsoring the PCS. So, Clement, we've got Machi taking to the rift once again tonight to face off against Alpha Esports. And uh, they looked pretty darn strong earlier on against Hong Kong Attitude. <laughs> And they definitely have been going on quite a tear recently, and uh, I think for this match, you know, it is fairly one-sided if uh, all things go at normally, but there are some things that I think we can look forward to. Number one it has to be the Assassin Showdown in mid lane. We have Xiaotu coming up with uh, being a LeBlanc main and Jimian as well getting multiple MVPs on the same champions. So those two should be butting heads really close to each other. And I think that's going to be the highlight for me. Elsewhere on the map, we'd also have um, like On versus Atlan. This is funny enough, one of those matchups where On has actually done quite decently in the past. It wasn't that one-sided uh, for Machi, especially in the bottom side. So we might hmm. be getting some surprises for those two. But uh, on the rest of the map, a little bit of a struggle, I would say. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. Well, we'll have to see if those avenues are enough for Alpha to find something. Remember, this is the team that is currently last place in the league, going to try to find wins wherever they can. But not going to be easy to do against the side of Machi. You see him there on the screen. Leekai, Gemini, Jimmy, and Atlan and Koala. And Gemini just had an absolute pop-off Diana game. A little bit of laughs coming out of the Machi side. We saw last last time uh, they were playing badminton when they won. Um, I wonder if they'll, uh, if they'll be doing it again or if they'll pick something different. Yeah, and I have to swing. tell you, that, that actually worked out really well, you know, uh, the, the Taiwan team is going towards uh, the, the the finals. So yeah, I hear good things. Kudos to, kudos to Machi, they were definitely helping out. Yeah, it's, it's always showing support while competing themselves. I mean, not everybody uh, is that forward thinking, right? Their opponents, they're going to be Alpha Esports. We got 3Z, we got K-Babe, we got Zhao Tu, On, and Chung. And uh, yeah, you know, definitely want to keep an eye on that bottom side to see what On can do. I mean, a very veteran player. Uh, people who, you know, maybe aren't as familiar with the the SEA scene, they will recognize that name from back in the day. It's always a possibility. Yeah, steps up and carries. I, I think he could go for more aggressive options here. Generally, Alpha Esports is a team that plays towards the bottom side of the map. Their main focus is their mid jungle. And bot lane in this matchup specifically, I feel like they can get away with a lot of just aggressive plays going in forward to it. So I expect 3Z to be on something that, like, Nar like the uh the dr mundo and in the meantime the bot lane may be picking up things like Kalista and varus we're gonna take a look at the jungle matchup here gemini definitely the main carry for his team and shout to i would say probably the best performing player overall for the uh uh for, for the alpha squad unfortunately though i feel like k babe has a lot more um very obvious mishaps compared to gemini so that yeah. tends to be the difference maker uh, when it comes to these two. Also, the first blood percentage uh, participation rate is something worth pointing out. You know, 41 never involved in those. Yeah, yeah it, it, it is interesting to think about it. You know, and it's, I don't think it's because he's not really trying to, to get off ganks early on. I, I just think uh, usually what ends up happening on the map is that, well, Alpha are the ones that are getting caught out early on and KBib is nowhere to be found. True. I, I think that definitely is the case for the most part. Um, we had Alpha Esports just losing lane on their own quite a bit. Uh, but we are going to have Machi throw, showing a lot of respect straight off the bat. Mm -hmm. And Olaf has got to go. That is the pick that everyone takes away from K-Babe. He can run it with Karma. He can run it with Lulu. You don't want to give Alpha their main strategy. And Alpha actually showing respect for Jimian too. Just straight up banning the LeBlanc despite it being mm -hmm. the best champion for what most likely is their best player. Yeah, you know, in the PCS, even the, the bottom teams do get uh, respect bans against them, and Olaf in particular, this is not just a K-Babe special, it's also a Dodoy one, so we've been seeing that happen time and again. Uh, there will be the Varus ban rounding out the Alpha uh, bans, but that leaves Viego open, and that gets insta-locked by Gemini. He's already had one heck of a pop-off game, and now he's got one heck of a pop-off champion. Yeah, they do like to play carry with the uh, Viego in the jungle. Not really a lane champion for that. In the meantime, Alpha actually going to go for uh, picks that I feel like are a lot safer than I assumed that they were going to go for. Mm -hmm. Just taking away the Ziggs um, from Atlan 
and also locking in the rise. The rise lock in is a little early for me, and I feel like G-Man could get a lot done here. I do want to see if G-Man actually has the Aurelion pick. That is a champion that he hasn't shown so far, but would definitely fit his motto. And I feel like Machi is a team that plays just so well with 131 that adding Aurelion into their rotation would be such a great benefit. So, you know, whether I, I don't even care if he's that proficient on it, I actually just want to see him pick it. <laughs> Yeah, we saw it last game on Moonblack. Didn't really get too many of chances to get rolling. Uh, maybe Machi will have a little bit of a better play. Definitely taking their time about this next pickup, seeing what they will grab into the rise. Jimmy has been uh, a pretty big Silas player, but, um, ooh, okay, that's a Diana lock-in. I think we might be getting a Viego mid. Okay, kind of interesting to see that. Yeah, the only other player on the team that has played Viego is, in fact, Likai there, so they're just swapping around their matchups. Want that AD plus AP combination coming in there. Uh, meanwhile, Alpha does look like they're going for a full burst kill combo onto their bottom side here. And Machi, smartly enough, reading the uh, the potential draft result, does get something rather safe for Atlas so he can stay very far away and hit him behind his front line. I think we are going to need a little bit more crowd control on Machi's side. I feel like a set might be coming out for them uh, if they allow it. And for Alpha... They have sort of a pick burst combo themselves. Uh, I guess the big question is like, what do they actually pick for a K-Bait? Because most of his champions are already gone from the rotation. Diego was another one of his big picks and they basically just full banned him and denied him with uh, the first pick on blue side. Yeah, it, it is interesting. Um, I mean, there is there is a Xin Zhao available if K-Bait wants to pick True. that up. And that has been a very high priority jungle. I feel like that's the obvious choice here. Mm. Um, but we'll see if Machi actually spend their last ban on it. If not, well, I guess we'll see. Anything's always, anything's possible with Alpha. That is going to be the set pick denied um, by the side of Alpha. Yep. I like that ban. It just fits way too snugly with the Diana. Ah, there's the Zen. Ah. I had hope. <laughs> I had hopium. But uh, no, it, it, uh, it's not happening. So where does this leave? Some... Uh, we do have some weird off-meta champions that are still left. I think Zach okay. is one that I'm actually pretty interested in getting back into the meta. Oh, Lee, Lee how can I forget is... about Lee Sin? I, uh, I'm an idiot. No, no, no. Lee Sin is definitely the obvious answer, but I want to see something fun. Okay, Volley Bear is also pretty obvious. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah K-Babe did get one. I mean, we've seen a little bit less prio on the Volley Bear of late, but oh, oh come on, Jimmy. And come on, Jimmy. Let's go. Lock it in. Let's go. This also could be a Lee Kai champion, but hey, why not? What the heck? I do like Aurelio uh, mid a lot more than I like <laughs> Yeah, Whoa, Sejuani! hey -oh. that is uh That's some CC for you. Oh, Machi learning how to play different variations of the Diana composition, and I love that they're uh, throwing this out here right now. Sejuani has been a support that's been picked in the LPL a couple of times. Incredibly tanky in the front line with her frozen armor and can engage at long distances. It's probably one of the most... Uh, secure engages that you can get from the support position allows you to catch up and follow with the Diana Moonfall and then you also have Vanguard to throw into it so I love this composition from Machi you, it's a very uh, dynamic comp you just throw your ultimates out um, you have a great 5v5 potential and for Alpha on the other side um, they have kill threat on the bottom lane but the rest of the lanes, I feel like, are very difficult to operate, especially if you look at the Aurelia versus Nar or the Viego versus Rise matchup. Uh, these aren't particularly easy matchups to get going, um, especially once you get past level six. So Alpha Esports, they, they need to play very safe, and I do expect them to be playing more towards the bottom side and towards On's lane to try to get kills. Right, that's going to be the play to open up. And, you know, we talked about pre-draft. This was the uh, biggest opportunity, perhaps, for uh, the side of Alpha to really try and open up some advantages for themselves. Uh, veteran presence from on. I do like having the Ziggs in hand there. Um, we have seen Ziggs just, just, honestly, for the most part, do such a great job, not just in laning phase, but throughout all the phases of the game. And that's why it has been such a popular choice. However, range is getting matched on the opposite side. 2v2 is going to be a little difficult. Perhaps we get some jungle attention. Um, the Volley Bear could come in and do quite a bit. We'll have to see. It's going to be on K-Babe to see if uh, you can set up Alpha for success early on. But Machi, just a pack of power picks for this team. And I really love what they've paired up with this Diana. Yeah, this is looking incredibly scary from Machi. I, I like 
that they're finally going into the Aurelia. That was one of the picks I felt like was very obviously missing from Machi's arsenal coming onto this patch. They haven't picked it for Lee Kai, haven't picked it for Jimian either. Finally going to get a debut on the final, uh, on, on the second day of week four. So a bit late into the party. We'll see how they deal with it. Um, on the other hand, for Alpha, I, I'm not sure what they want to do later on into the game. I, I feel like their identity in the mid late phases is a little bit... Um, a little bit hard to define because they don't really have one three one pressure against these matchups, and their team fight also is a little bit lacking in terms of the front line. So they're they're they have to have three Z very well integrated with the team in order to use Mega Nar and give themselves a chance in five v five team fights. And that has been a struggle for Alpha Esports. It's the coordination, you know. Unlike Liab, who have been picking up the pieces and pushing it a little further together, uh, Alpha haven't found results because they haven't necessarily gotten quite as well together in this uh, game. We'll have to see if that changes for them. Let's take a look at our runes to kick things off here. A couple of conquerors, rather three, on the side of Machi. No surprises there. Uh, taking a look at it, we do have pretty standard runes across the board here. Just taking a look at the Sejuani Aftershock, of course, no surprises there. Um, we do have her, I believe, going for Frostfire Gauntlet um, at times, or just going for the um, Zeke's Convergence. That's also a great item for her because she has so many immobilizing abilities. Essentially, she has the Q that procs it, the E that procs it, and also the R that procs it. So you can get a lot of extra damage with that item going down. I believe that's the uh, the LPL builds that we've seen so far. And on the other side of the matchup, we do have another Conquerors coming out from um, the Rise here. So in this matchup, I feel like he's fairly safe. Doesn't really need the phase rush to get away from Viego early on. Very understandable in the picks. All right, no shenanigans to start. Alpha Esports, one of those teams I would expect potentially some fun. Let's keep an eye on this matchup top side too with the Aurelia in the hands of Likai up against 3Z's Nar. I think there's a lot of potential for some execution if the Nar bar is timed well. We have seen this matchup in spring quite a few times, especially Top King bringing it to the PCS. And uh, Aurelia is considered a counter pick, but it, funnily enough, actually is a matchup for. Uh, well, oh. I'll say that. that, that it, it's considered a counter pick. There we go. <laughs> there <laughs> Likai we go. forcing the flash on 3Z early on. I was about to throw out a contradictory stat is that even though Spring Split Conventional Wisdom was Aurelia beats Nar, um, Aurelia actually had the, um, uh, Nar actually had the upper hand in the head to head matchup in terms of a win rate. And I think a lot of it is just because how flexible Nar is as a champion as we go directly in. Ooh, nice Rudolph combo. Man, a Jin Sejuani lane, there's just so many opportunities to uh, stun and slow and stop you up. and. Uh, on and Shung are going to have to be very careful in this lane. Yeah, this whole identity of Machi is just long-range sniping potential. They can get their combos off from over a thousand range, and there's not much that Alpha can do to actually dissuade this. Uh, if you look at the picks, they have to have Mega Nar to really have a good counter-engage option here. Nothing else uh, is really going to work. Mm -hmm. Jimmy in. Miss Viego, just dish a little bit of extra damage back. Yeah, Lee Kai has been having a great job just playing forward here. Always want to keep an eye on where the junglers are going to be headed, though, because lane of potential. Oh, my goodness, Lee Kai goes deep, even takes the tower shot. Slightly miscalculates the amount of damage, and 3Z is able to hop away. Uh, that was close. Uh, 3Z was, I think it was about 8 HP off of that trade. Yeah, I was so... going to say, I think he maybe had 3 HP <laughs> for 3Z, just about. Uh, that's about as good of a limit test as you could get from Lee Kai. He was just an inch off from getting the first blood right there, so can't fault him from that attempt. Still has the flash advantage regardless. We are getting some trades in this bottom side as K-Babe comes in to shoo away the rest of the members. Yeah. Koala coming up here through the lane. Definitely seemed like there was some focus on mid. Shout 2 is a little bit low as well, so he's going to have to back away. Machi certainly wasting no time in sniffing for uh, a play somewhere. Atlan, oh. oh my goodness. And there's the interrupt from the Sejuani. Koala's in trouble, unfortunately can't flash the wall. And this is actually gonna be an Alpha first blood. Really nicely done by Alpha to cast that one out. I felt like Machi's bot lane had an inkling, but they still went for a very dangerous path. I I, I think in most situations, if that play happens, you, you definitely go for the longer route. But meanwhile, they're trying to get something back onto 3Z. 
Oh, good hop from 3Z. Does actually mean Gemini tanks a lot more tower shots than he would have liked. And here comes Jimmy in to tag his way in. 3Z, I think they can finally lock him up with all of that, juggling the aggro effectively. Meanwhile, Machi kind of zoned away from their own tower down bottom. And this is what we expected in this matchup. Both sides is trying to bully out the weak side from the opposite team to the maximum extent right here. If I'm Atlan, I'm not really willing to walk up here, but they do have the TPs coming in. Yeah, that's going to be completed by Jimian. Throws on the hard road path and able to find a little bit of extra damage here. Shung's able to tank it, though, in a 3v3. Alpha weren't too worried, so they hold their nerve. Meanwhile, Gemini sticking around as 3Z comes back into lane, and Likai just zones him off. So effectively, Machi, you know, for their investment, they're able to get a little bit more uh, done to zone 3Z away from this one, even though uh, the dive looked like it could have been a bit scuffed at first. Look at the difference in farm. 3Z is starving. Uh, yeah, he's down 28 CS five minutes into the game. Uh, not exactly what you want to see. And we also have a Diana gank potentially coming up. The ping's coming down here, and Jimmy and trying to find a better position on Chow 2. Does he sniff this one out? Uh, this KB sees him, point. though. Yeah, that's going to give the game away here. But Jetsu's actually still far forward. What? Takes his sweet time before he's forced to flash away. And in the permafrost, he gets locked up. Uh, okay. I think he honestly didn't have to burn that had he walked away at the right time. Yeah, it seems like he... Uh, I'm not really sure what he was trying to do because the wave was pushing in anyway. So oh, it gives a bit of a freebie towards Machi. And, and now I think Machi can swing that into jungle skirmishes because they have the flash advantage on mid lane. Uh, here comes Shung, K-Babe, and Xiao Tu. Uh, Shung forced to flash back, and another stun. Just so much CC trained in here. However, Gemini takes a lot of damage and has to flash his out himself. Party portal coming around the side. Xiao Tu does get taken down before he can actually take it through. And then Alpha are trying to get the kills, but they do get turned around. Machi dodging on everything. Gemini does go down, but Jimmy and Flash in the wall and picks himself up a triple kill with the Heartbreaker. Oh, we talked about the Assassin Showdown, but only Assassin came here to play, and I wonder if Jimmy can get the Satchel. Uh, the tower isn't low enough. That would have been pretty funny. <laughs> but uh, we'll watch this play again. I, I feel like Machi is pretty happy to take these fights because that they have extra summoners on, uh, on the mid lane position, and... In the initial fight, we do have Alpha actually doing a good job throwing down most of their crowd control onto Gemini and forcing him out of the fight. But unfortunately, K-Babe can't really get away, and it's great target selection. They go on Xiao Tu first, no flash there, get the kill, have the cleanup with Atlin on the flip side, and G-Man able to pick up a very clean triple to start the game off. Well, I think we're in for a quick one. Yeah, we might be. Uh, Jimmy and uh, Fed, check. Viego, big, check. Early game Machi skirmish wins, check. So, so far, things are looking good for Machi. And uh, I don't think this was too much of a surprise coming into the game, but, uh, you know, I don't want to write off Alpha just yet. They, unfortunately, do seem to not be on the same page, you know? I mean, Xiaotu started that off by kind of getting caught unnecessarily and didn't have Flash available for the fight, gets deleted before he can take the party portal. K-Babe does go for a start onto this Infernal Dragon. And uh, Koala doesn't actually see him, doesn't have a ward to put over the wall. I think uh, K-Babe actually uh, walked directly into the pit, so they definitely know that he's... Oh, uh, there we go, yeah. There was the, the scum crap, they had this one. K-Babe smites it down, but they might make him pay for it with his life. Curtain call open in the back. Shung's gonna tank through here. Big Inferno Bomb, two steps by Jimmy in, but Koala tanks it. K-Babe actually gonna get out as he uh, was body blocked by the rest of his team. Saving private K-Babe, well done by Alpha. That actually turned out quite well, but in the meantime, Machi get a lot here in the top side. 3Z can't even stay in his own tower at this point. He will just get tower dove by Likai, so he has to do a base, and they get two things on the top side. They get the zone away, and they also get the herald for the mid lane drop, trying to free Jimian to now roam on the rest of the map. A good play by Alpha, definitely clawing something back in a deficit, and they do have the drop on Gemini. Unfortunately, Gemini also has a drop on K-Babe. Yeah, forcing out the defensive ultimate from K-Babe. And meanwhile, yeah, Leekai, we talked about the tower dive. This should be coming in pretty soon. Narbar, though, near to complete. I don't know if Leekai wants to take it just yet. Now he blade surges away at the last second. Gemini should be coming in here to help clean up. Rift Herald is going to get popped. And 3Z, he won't have a tower to worry about for much longer. And I think yeah. he knows there's not a lot of ways for him to go. And he's going to try to retreat through the river. Uh, 
Machi are more interested in taking the tower. Red team's I respect that play quite a bit, actually. Machi, you know, not going ultra bloodthirsty for this one. They don't see where Sheng is on the map just yet. And they just go for the uh, the guaranteed play in the meantime. So, I, I think Alpha at this point, I I we still want to see them focus a little bit harder on the bottom side. They still have a lot of ultimates to throw out once Sheng does hit that level 6. And I see Shelly kind of glitching out, but finally does go down here. Uh, for the other side, for Machi, they can just start fights wherever they want to. Their, their full alt combo is online. They can snipe people out from such a long distance. So I, I just want to see them keep uh, Diana, Viego, and Aurelia in the same core. And uh, Atlan can open up from 2,000 distances away. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I can't just wait. I, I just can't wait for Koala to hit six because then we get the Glacial Prison combo and anybody who gets pinged with the Ice Bola uh, is probably just going to get blown up. Yeah. That, that is kind of the game plan going into this one. All right, Atlan able to shave away uh, one of the turret plates down to the bottom side with the back timing is what they were. Yeah, Jimmy gets off to a flying start in that earlier uh, skirmish. And uh, honestly, we've seen enough Fed Viegos to know how this one goes. Yeah, for Alpha, if they want to win a team fight, their only option is actually to kill Jimmy in first. Uh, if he gets to stay Taller. anywhere in the fight. Ooh. So Let's far, yeah. oh, Nar against the wall. Yeah, forced to use that defensively. 3Z, he's just going to have such a hard time. You can see how easy it was to catch him in the flawless duet. And Shung is out of position. Yeah, they're going to be able to find him. And a lot of stun locks. Yeah, you can go golden, but that's not going to buy you a whole lot of time, unfortunately. Just a little bit slow down. And Koala picking up a kill for himself onto his opposite number. A little help from the yeah. rest of Machi. That was a little bit awkward. You could see that Gemini was trying to give the kill over to Atlan. Koala had the uh, Ignite taken already. And now on might get get one. on the map. They're going to cut the wave and then the final curtain call shot. Actually, Ooh. On just opts to take the aggressive play forward. Uh, all right. On really nowhere to go, unfortunately. So uh, they will just let Jimmy and have this one. Pretty big value there for the Viego. And now it's going to be tower push time. got to say, I feel kind of sad seeing some of our old vets just getting chased across the map like this. Uh, Shung, Sometimes however, they are a change in Clement. Oh no, Gemini, yep, with the help of Koala, will lock down Shung once again. Machi adds another one, eight kills already in this game, and they just keep on rotating around. I think Zhao Tu's days are numbered. He's got flashback, might have to use it. There it goes. Oh, Ooh, good for prison. Loot. Gemini actually caught. On still has some fight in him. He's coming back to it. You know, I really don't want to see On go down on Alpha uh, Esports just being harassed like this. And, you know, thinking about Alpha Esports, they have actually produced a lot of talent throughout the years. Uh, Abe was a coach for them once. You got Kino going over to Beyond Gaming. So uh, it's just kind of hard and unfortunate to, to see Alpha uh, underperform on their expectations like this one. So. We want to see some more fight coming into their way, and if you look at on CS, he's actually holding up decently in his own lane. Could be an avenue that they play through here. Atlan doesn't have uh, the flash either, so on could get the better of him with the satchel charge. Yeah, on actually doing a pretty good job holding his own. It's just unfortunately a lot of attention being focused bottom. Speaking of, K Babe is actually here, uh, and they found Koala. There's the stun off. Do they have enough to go for the dive though? Mega Inferno Bomb and even the teleport coming through. Looking for the Stormbringer. K Babe on top of Atlan. Looking for it. Cannot find the kill as the Stunlock comes in. And now Gemini into the back line he goes. Followed up by Leekai. Vanguard's Edge and Leekai just opens up as they shred through Alpha Esports. Only 3Z remaining. The triple kill coming in for the Aurelia. Leekai wants to make it a Quadra. And he can't quite do it. It's stolen away by Scumbag Viego. Oh, that was so painful to watch. Atlan gets out with the Gale Force. He didn't have the flash, but still had enough to just walk away from the Stormbringer. And he was one auto attack from going down. Alpha Esports expend everything to catch him there. And they just all fall down. That was five kills going over towards Machi. Oh, boy. And it was a good setup to start. Like, I mean, I really like this from Shung Kebe baits around the side before the ward's there, but just can't quite get the deletion. Atlan's so close to going down. Stormbringer comes up, and it's just not enough. 
Yeah, that was very well played by Atlan there. He does get the fourth shot, extra movement speed to start that one off. And then the close in comes down. We have the double TP. And that's the combo we were talking about. Just the uh, ability to get the uh, Moonfall and the Vanguard's Edge and then Heartbreakers throughout that entire team fight. It was just a, a zone of death coming in from Alpha. They, they have no way to survive that being caught behind any lines. The emotes come through. A full uh, perfect ace on one end. Jimmy gets a just a kill on to on on the aftermath of that. Okay. Meanwhile, Leekai, more than that. Oh boy. Flawless duet. Uh, I don't think that room prison is going to stop you for much long, and he just dives straight to the turret. Yeah, this is uh, this is one of those uh, Machi overwhelmed games, I think. Yeah, we had a very similar game today uh, with Machi against Hong Kong Attitude, where they just crushed them uh, without much of a much plan uh, either words. Uh, I think Machi are really gearing up for the postseason as well. I, I don't think they were as dominant in the early game uh, throughout the summer split. We did see them actually have pretty slow starts. They were usually behind in gold lead. The only person that was actually ahead uh, was Leekai, just by a smidgen in his own position. But the rest of the map was typically negative in terms of gold differential at 10 minutes. But recently, Machi and their laning phase have been looking downright scary. They, they are on a very similar tra trajectory to Mega Bank Beyond Gaming from what I've seen this week. And they certainly want to get to that level, right? Because the only teams that they've not been able to, to beat as On just gets popped in there um, have been uh, Mega Bank Beyond Gaming and PSG. They both have a 0-2 record against them. The chase comes in once again, and uh, Jimmy and, oh boy, that is one fed ruined king. You know the Simpson meme where there's a bunch of school children just saying, Stop, stop he's stop. already dead! <laughs> It does seem to yeah. be the situation here. That's what's happening for sure. And oh, I, I did want to see Alpha just throw down the gauntlet. I really wanted the LeBlanc versus the Kali matchup. That was what I was hoping for personally, but uh, Shaltu went for the Rise, and I think Rise is a pick that you do have to survive a little bit in the early game to get going and really make use of your globals. This is not one of those games. <laughs> Alpha, no, uh, he'd be pretty lucky. Uh, and I think Mega Bank, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Machi might be looking for that speed run. Again. I mean, easy to, uh, ooh, as uh, Gemini does get caught, but he turns right around for the rest of the team on, just getting picked off by Jimmy in there, and Gemini even finishing off the kill at the last second. And even though Alpha looked like they had a trap opened up, it uh, is not going to be nearly enough right now. Fuala going golden, and K-Babe just getting dropped down. And how many ruined bears have we seen in this game? I'm counting at least four. Now, I think Jimian's getting his practice on the Ziggs, on the Volley Bear at the same time. Nine he zero play so many champions. <laughs> I oh, do man. like Alpha Esports idea. You know, you want to keep your fighting spirits up, continue to go for those picks. But unfortunately, I, I don't think they've been, ever been able to get kills fast enough before Machi actually just rotates in. That's something I'm very impressed about, how fast they're just coming to these fights. Like I said before, if Alpha want to win, they actually have to kill Jimmy in first. He's way too potent in the resets, and with this type of a gold differential, he's always going to get a takedown. Yeah, Jimmy has been coming up huge. Uh, Gemini's been doing all right. He's not quite anywhere near what he was last game around, but uh, to top it off, everyone else from the Machi side is either uh, a massive kill threat, or they're just so safe they can't die. Um, you even see, like, Koala just waiting around for those big plays, and here we go. Gemini, you know, he, he checks into two, Goes on a run. I mean, it's all a ruse because at this point, the trap is already shut and they don't know that they're dead yet. The scary thing is the call was actually for Lee Kai to continue pushing on the top. The rest of the team's like, you know what? We got this. You, you don't have to come. 4v5, no problem. Barely an inconvenience. Ooh. Ooh, Lee Kai does find a lot of alpha members, though, does get shut down. Maybe he should have taken the member with the rest of the team, but the cavalry has arrived. The bear cavalry, I should say. As uh, Koala tanks up a lot of damage here, Gemini moving in, and they have the stun lock, but do they have the damage? Jimmy in just coming up with one, but the rest of his team also opening up. Curtain call, tagging on one, dodges two, can't hit three, and Jimmy in comes in to clean that one up, gets to play a Ziggs for a few seconds longer. And it doesn't matter where Alpha go, they just keep finding themselves deleted over and over and over. Uh, I definitely feel like this is the most one-sided game that we have seen in the BCS. Just 
Not but a lot of fight from Clement, we, we could have the speed run. Oh, let's it's go. Up 20 let's minutes. Go. Something to fight for here. So the speed run was made by Mega Bank Beyond Gaming against Leah. 20 minutes, 35 seconds. We got about one more minute to close off the game. We're going to be checking teleports here. They have to do it in this run. So out the esports, they have to make another engage for this to happen. And it does seem like they are here to play. Alpha gonna try to make this one, but the turnaround once again in goes Lika. I gotta keep an eye on that. Aurelia, blade surging left, right, center, finding the kills. And they are going to be able to close this one out sub 20 minutes, so they have enough time to actually do it with the minion waves. They're gonna go for the inhibitors first, just to make it safe. And Jimmy and going the well into the back line to get the deletion. I think they might just have this one, Clement, to go for the record. Last ditch, the Alamo defense for 3Z and K-Babe, but it is not going to be enough. They are not tanky through all this. Likai will get the finisher. Yes. The ace comes out. 2020, they've got themselves just enough time on the clock. And I do believe we are going to have a new record on our hands. Machi looked to fire down the Nexus, having a little bit of fun with this one. They're certainly oh, no, not no, too no, fussed. No, no, no. I don't think they're going to get it at the end no. of the day. Oh, it was so close to the record, but they had the rise of the kills. Machi Esports will take it just 2043. Oh, uh, talk about the priorities, Machi. That was not the correct move. Uh, I expected better understanding of tempo from Machi. They should have gone for the Nexus first, <laughs> put themselves in the history books first. And uh, I wonder what's wrong with their staff member. Uh, he seems to just be enjoying the AC on the floor there. I uh, hope he's yeah, okay. It's, it's, uh, well, he got a little tired from all the badminton, maybe. <laughs> uh, it could definitely be the case. As... Well, uh, all right. You know, it's fun to see the afro coming out here uh, uh, as Alpha Esports did used to have that. Sweet hairstyle. Yeah. I do like that. <laughs> but yeah, Machi, uh, it, it, only only disappointed that they didn't get the uh, the speedrun record, um, letting the timer expire on that one as they chased the kills onto the fountain. So, you know, I'll give them an S minus. You can't give them full marks on that one. That was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was really good. I didn't, did not keep their eyes on the prize there. But I think we got a couple of very important uh, tidbits of information here. Number one, Machi is on board with the Aurelia. Do not think that they have completely skipped over this champion. They have done a really good demonstration that they have that in their back pocket. I think this is Lee Kai's kill where he was taken down. It was a team effort. Um, maybe? Yeah, it was a little, a little wonky in that one, and just so much expended to find Lee Kai, uh, but it takes so long to do it because Alpha are so far behind, right? That, okay, here comes the rest of Machi, and I, I honestly, this is kind of where it turned into the end of the game. It just was uh, extremely extended engage after the fact. K-Babe does an okay job of zoning, but then he has to flash out, and all of a sudden, the squishies are laid bare. And uh, nobody's getting out of this one alive. Koala constantly finding ways to stop the backs, stop people from really going anywhere. Even when K-Babe thinks maybe he's safe in this one, Jimmy comes around the side and polishes him off. That was absolutely disgusting. We didn't see it the first time around. We were actually focused on the bottom side of the map. But Lee Kai there, he actually dodged out and expended four ultimates from the side of Alpha Esports. They used Meganar, they oh, yeah. used Solar Flare, and uh, Mega Inferno Bomb and Realmorp on him. Oh, oh, <laughs> he got four ultimates for that death. And he was able to walk Nearly out- Nearly great escape too. <laughs> yeah, I, I was... love that he just kept dashing around. It really is so hard to pin down. I mean, that's what I love about this champion. Oh, Blade I... Surge is a really good ability. It almost feels like she still has Ionia fervor, like the old one that gave her uh, tenacity. Yeah. <laughs> it's like- Back in the day, man. Uh, that was kind of- I remember the days of better nerf Aurelia. I think we're back in those days, to be honest. <laughs> No, yeah, I think you're right, actually. <laughs> On 11.14, it's a terrifying champion to behold. I'm glad that teams have started to pick this up because it has mm. shown to be very powerful. Um, I also like that uh, Machi was unafraid to really mix it up with a lot of their power picks, right? Like, you know, we, we looked at this Viego and thought this, you know, this is probably going to be a Jimmy and champion. We were right, but they also added a lot to it um, and just got off to just such an incredible start and just heartbreaker after heartbreaker after heartbreaker and... Well, it was a heartbreaker for Alpha. Unfortunately, they do drop another game and the playoffs really slipping out of reach for this team as they just haven't really been able to find too many answers. And to be fair, I'm almost, I, I'm also very, uh, very impressed by the way Alan played this game. He didn't die a single time this time when it was very mm -hmm. clear that Alpha Esports was throwing everything and the kitchen sink towards him. 
and we saw that full five man engage where Atlan, without a flash, was able to escape using the Gale Force to get out of the uh, the knockup there, coming in from the Stormbringer, gets out on one single auto attack left of HP. Very I can't really believe he got him. away. Yeah, that, that was, was ridiculous. Was Alpha so tried weird. so hard. Bot, bot lane dives are cursed today. I'm telling you, Clement, they're cursed. <laughs> they definitely are. That was a very forced play from Alpha Esports. Uh, I, I don't want there to be any illusion. Like, even if they got the kill on Atlan, they were not getting out of that. That was kind of a Hail Mary play. They they were I'm all going to die there. But they are willing to make that bet, which I, I find respectable. But unfortunately, that's yeah. not how the play ended up there. And Jimian, once again, with the Viego, it's, it's been a while since we actually seen this Viego mid yeah. uh, really come and up. he's and back. <laughs> Jimian's back in the MVP column, baby. 14-0 and 9. Oh, man. I, I it was really honestly, hope it was disgusting. gives us a little bit more fight in the future. Like... This, this was just such a brutal smackdown coming in, and we still see the strength of the Diego comp. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they knew the win condition, but also the skirmishes early on really enabled them. You saw a lot of pressure around the mid side, and I think it really was that early fight that Jimmy and picks up the triple kill. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the moment when it's like, oh, oh, okay, this is going to be a problem. That being said, I don't think we'll ever see them pick uh, Diego plus Diana again. It's a little bit too slow on the map, but against Alva Esports, mm -hmm. well, Machi could probably get away with anything. Yeah, why not, right? See what they can make happen. Well, we've got one more game to go. You certainly won't want to miss it. It's J-Team taking on the undefeated PSG. We'll be right back after a short break.